The 16,000 kilometers of coastline that fringe the Caribbean Sea and surround the region's 7,000 islands are as diverse as they are beautiful. This place, where the land meets the sea, is a special place where ancient worlds come together. In the shallow coastal areas, juvenile fish find shelter among the sea grasses and coral reefs. It is a place to find inspiration or simply a tasty meal. The coastline is also the place where humans live, where fishermen pull their seine and sell their catch. It's the place where families come for an evening swim and where the Caribbean's largest industry sells its world-famous combination of sea, sun and sand to visitors from all over the world. The coastline is also where most large towns are located, with their ports, roads and key infrastructure. It is without doubt one of the most valuable parts of Caribbean countries. But the coastline is also a highly dynamic environment where ocean swells caused by winter storms, sometimes thousands of miles away, come crashing onto the shore with spectacular force. These seasonal swells shift the sand and redeposit it where the currents dictate until a new balance is reached between the beach and the sea. These periods of erosion are usually followed by periods where the beaches recover, creating a natural cycle of erosion and accretion. But in the last few decades, beaches around the Caribbean have started to erode at a greater rate than usual. Measurements confirm what people have noticed, that the width of many beaches is shrinking. The advancing sea is gradually undermining many buildings built near the water's edge. The increasing rate of erosion has been attributed in part to the unusually large number of intense hurricanes that have affected the Caribbean in the past two decades. These extreme weather events can cause huge damage to the coastline, which can take years to recover. In most places, however, the main reason for this acceleration in coastal erosion is sea level rise caused by global warming. Sea level rise is projected to accelerate for two reasons. First, simple thermal expansion of the oceans because water expands slightly as it warms. The second is more worrying. Images from space have shown that glaciers and polar ice caps are melting at an alarming rate. Measurements taken on the ground have revealed that parts of the West Antarctic and the Greenland ice sheets are sliding towards the sea at an accelerated rate. The dynamics of glaciers are very complex and projections for sea level rise remain very uncertain, though recent studies indicate that by the end of the 21st century, sea level rise could reach as much as 1.5 meters to 2 meters above present levels. In 2010, the Carib Save Partnership, together with the Caribbean Community Climate Change Center, undertook a study to improve our understanding of the effects of projected sea level rise and storm surges on CARICOM countries. Part of the study involved mapping the elevation of coastal areas and modeling the effects of a 6-meter storm surge in increments of 1 meter, as seen here in Belize City. Kingston in Jamaica, and Nassau in the Bahamas. The study also estimated the cost of losses and damages to infrastructure associated with sea level rise. By 2050, capital costs were estimated to be approximately 26 billion US dollars for a one meter rise in sea level and 68 billion for a two meter rise. By 2080, these costs increase to 60 and 187 billion for one and two meter sea level rises respectively. 
These enormous costs represent substantial proportions of the annual gross domestic product of the CARICOM region and would be impossible burdens to bear for small developing countries. Preventing these huge costs caused by sea level rise is clearly a priority for all Caribbean countries. One approach is to protect the shoreline by building a seawall, something that the people of Georgetown in Guyana are very familiar with. 90% of Guyana's population live below sea level and are therefore totally dependent on coastal defenses. Pumping water over the seawall is the only way to prevent flooding. The cost of operating and maintaining these coastal defenses is a major burden on the economy of Guyana and a cost that is likely to accelerate rapidly in the coming decades because of sea level rise. The problem has been made worse because much of the coastal mangrove forest was removed in the 1970s to be used as fuel. The lack of this natural coastal defense has accelerated coastal erosion, which is now undermining the wall in some areas. The real economic value of wetlands and mangroves for shoreline protection was only brought to light through a major scientific study that was done after Hurricane Katrina in 2005 which ruptured the levees around New Orleans and killed nearly 2,000 people. This study revealed that one hectare of wetland prevents, on average, 33,000 US dollars of damages per hurricane. This figure was based on an analysis of the damages caused by 34 major hurricanes in the United States of America and also concluded that the loss of wetlands around New Orleans prior to Katrina was largely to blame for the failure of the man-made sea defenses. Red mangroves are particularly effective at absorbing wave energy because their tangled roots create a flexible and permeable buffer that slows down the flow of water. This also makes mangroves very effective at protecting inland areas from the devastating effects of tsunamis. But despite their great value, mangroves continue to be cut down throughout the Caribbean and around the world at an even greater rate than rainforests. One country that is very vulnerable to hurricanes and sea level rise is Belize, particularly in the low-lying coastal areas and offshore islands where much of the mangroves have been removed to give properties a direct view of the sea and a sandy beach on their doorstep. On the small island of Key Corker, the rate of beach erosion is now a major problem for property owners who use whatever means available to protect their homes. Tropical storms have become more frequent in the past decade, so repairing the beach is a constant concern. because of climate change, because of the beach erosion that has happened throughout the years, our island keeps shrinking. So we are at nature's mercy more and more every year. And it, it is scary. Our buildings are stronger, yes, but the storms are bigger. Staff and students of the Ocean Academy, Key Corker's newly created community high school, together with local volunteers, have joined forces to restore some of the original coastal vegetation and have embarked on an award-winning mangrove replanting operation. The seedling, of course this one is it's already started Beginning the, root. The, the root, but when we stick them they don't have that. You just hold the mangrove right here where it starts growing and it's easy, you just stick it to the, to the sand or the mud bottom rather right here. You go over with the pipe. That's it. And it grows. This technique is called the Riley encasement methodology. And we got it off the internet. The modest cost of doing this conservation work is in sharp contrast to the value of the ecosystem services that will be provided by these restored mangroves. In 2009, the World Resources Institute estimated that the value of the shoreline protection services provided by Belize's coastal mangroves was around 140 million US dollars per year in avoided damages. 
Mangroves also provide essential nursery areas for fish and shellfish and are an essential part of the large ecological complex that includes Belize's extensive seagrass beds and its world-famous coral reefs that attract divers from all over the world. The combined value of the ecosystem services that mangroves and coral reefs provide to the economy of Belize in shoreline protection, fisheries and tourism is around 500 million US dollars per year, according to scientists at the World Resources Institute. Clearly, supporting community-based conservation and enforcing environmental laws that protect these natural resources must surely be one of the best investments that could be made by governments and private sector across the Caribbean. Word is spreading and new initiatives are starting across the region. In Guyana, the Mangrove Action Project launched in 2010 with funding from the European Union is working with communities to re-establish the coastal mangroves as part of a national drive to look at more cost-effective and sustainable solutions for coastal protection. Organizations like Sandwatch are promoting the involvement of schools and communities in monitoring their beach profiles and taking action to protect them like planting trees and sea oats to stabilize the beach. A country that understands the role of natural coastal defenses is Barbados, whose coastal zone management unit has become a regional center of expertise in shoreline protection. Uh, the Barbados coastal ecosystems represent some of the most valuable coastal assets, both economically and socially, um, of the country mainly because Barbadians are integrally involved with the oceans and coasts, but along with that, are, of course, our principal industry is tourism. The economy of Barbados relies heavily on its famous white sand beaches, so protecting them against storms and sea level rise is a national priority. In some areas, the rate of beach erosion has been accelerating and undermining coastal buildings. To better understand how to solve this problem, coastal engineers are working with marine biologists to see how best to use both natural and man-made coastal defenses. After the studies were completed, what we found was that there were, one of the major things that affected beach stability was actually water quality. Uh, water quality and its effect on the reef, primarily because the reef acts as a, a breakwater against the waves, but it also acts as a source of sand for our beaches. So if the water quality isn't good and the reef health suffers, then this causes an obvious problem for our beach width and erosion occurs. The beautifully designed South Coast Sea Defences and Boardwalk have successfully stopped coastal erosion and provide a welcome attraction for tourists, residents and small businesses but it was the decision to invest in large-scale municipal sewage treatment facilities that allowed the offshore coral reef to recover and help restore the south coast beaches. By combining hard and soft engineering, the people of Barbados have decided to work with nature to protect their coastline. Sea level rise and storm surges present a huge challenge for Caribbean countries that will require careful planning and difficult decisions. In some places, a gradual retreat inland will be inevitable. But in other, more valuable areas, coastline protection will be the favored approach. But whatever the choice, maintaining our natural coastal defenses will reduce the risk to human life and damage to property. By conserving wetlands, seagrass beds, and coral reefs, we not only preserve effective coastal defenses, but we also safeguard the many other benefits that these ecosystems provide to fisheries, tourism, and the aesthetics of our shorelines. It is through partnerships between governments, communities, scientists, and nature itself that we will have a better chance of preserving our living shorelines for all of us to enjoy. <laughs>